Yeah, well, thank you. Thanks for showing up. I wouldn't have thought that so many people are interested in logging. That's good. So the agenda is pretty simple. First of all, I'll try to explain why logging might be useful, because at least my impression is that it is one of the most, let's say, underused modules. Then how do we make it work? So I'm just showing around you know, a little bit of the source code and a little bit about structure. And then some optional content in case I run over, including the all-time favorite is logging slow. So um, this used to be a Python notebook, and for scaling issues, I just made some screenshots and turned it into PDF. But you can get all the code on GitHub. And well, let's start with the ugly part. If you don't use a logging module and start off with the base, most basic way to get out your message, you start most likely use print. And you can use it for multiple things. So looking at that, we have normal information. So this um, first one, debugging. We want to know what our program is doing, what values are in there at the moment. We might run into a situation where something goes wrong. We might also want to report on that. We also do this at different levels. So we have this little division function that really does only a division. And then we call it from another um, function that just well, iterates through a complete task. And now we have four calls that we might want to see at one point in time. Normally, if you were to write that, you would probably start, okay, that's interesting, I'll add a print, a statement, uh, I'll add a print statement, print it, later on remove the statement. If this program runs into a problem during a long run, you may add some functionality to write into a file. This is all good and well, but it has some limitations. So it looks like this. You get all information out. But um, the only thing that you actually get when you look at it is all the things that you wrote yourself. So that's all text that is in the print statements. And it's all handled the same. You can't really differentiate between the debug level, the error level, etc. So print has some limitations. We have to select ourselves what we want to lock, how important it is, how we want to handle it. We have to write all the information we want to add to a message. It might be timing information, it might be information about, well, function parameters, whatever you can think of. You have to do it yourself, which also means that you have a good chance to end up with messages who are slightly different. Now, it's not a problem if you read them, but it starts to be a problem if you want to use them in a parser, for example. So I had a situation once where we actually used logging, not in Python, but from Java with different logging configurations and slightly strange logging configurations. And that became a huge um, pain to actually pass those because they were also slightly different. And if you do it by hand, if you do different formats for dates, it will be worse. Um, finally, we only have limited control where our message does end up. So you can print to a file, you can print to the console, you can even write your own functionality to write to both. But once you start doing this, you basically implement your own little logging module, and chances are that the logging that you actually need is already in the standard lab. So what's different with logging? We have more structure. Structure in this case is pretty good because it not only helps you to pass the thing, it also helps you recognize what's in your messages. So you get the nice state stamps of all the same size, get your error um, information, you get the name of the logger, it's all pretty nice. And, oh no, typo there. And the logging module provides us with all the different infrastructure that we need to set this up. So logging is good. To um, go into the slightly more theoretical band, if you have a message that you want to output from the program, you might ask yourself, what, how important is this? Do I need this every time I run this program, or do I really care about if something is going wrong or if I'm interested in debugging? Where does it come from? As your program grows, you'll have multiple modules, multiple libraries in there that may or may not produce interesting messages, and you want to control over that. You also want some information about context. When did this happen? 
You may even, if you do um, logging for the web, and um, add session information and things like that, so that in your log you can really um, follow a, um, a user along. What happened? That's the thing that you normally think first about when you write a logging message, that's what you are writing. I'm doing this, or this function failed. And finally, how does it all look like? So normally if you think about logging, you'd think about a text string, but it's completely reasonable with just a few changes to maybe write it from JSON, which again makes parsing much simpler and moves you slowly into the direction of structured logging, where you can send your logged messages to a database and do some pretty advanced querying, which would be extremely hard if you did it all by hand in text in the beginning. Finally, if we have our message, we want also to control where this message ends up. So do we send it to a file? If we send it to a file, do we want a rotating handler? Do we want, in a multi-process environment, maybe send it to a socket or a database? Do we want to aggregate it? And this is all things that you, well, would have to implement if you just go the print way, and which a logging module implements. The challenge there is it implements all of it, not always in the, let's say, most transparent way. So there are some, well, let's say, things that you should know about when you start with logging. But to keep things easy, just as, this is just the same program we had um, previously, and now just with logging. Now, what you see there is that it does not really add much code to your program. This is even a pretty bad example, because what we have there is, well, no real business logic or programming at all. It's just a division. But even there, each log message is just like a printf statement, and you have some extremely easy configuration up there. So this logging basic config basically just tells the, um, the module that it should include debug messages in the output, and then we get a logger. It's two lines extra and four lines that are different, so no worries. And that leads us with this kind of output. But you can say that even with these little changes, we get some bonus features. So we have a more standardized format. We have the lock level in for our debug, always at the beginning. We have the name of the logger. We only requested one logger, which is why it's always root. And then we have our log it message. But also, we have the um, stack trace for the exception log. Going back. When we did this printf, we just said that we, um, log exception, we had a problem there. With log exception, you not only generate um, an error message, so a log level error, but you also send out the stack trace. Makes parsing, again, somewhat harder if you do it in a file. You can change it as well. But you get this information essentially for free. And, well, second code is just the second iteration. We got results. So, well, this pretty simple change. We got a lot of extra features. Um, mapping the things that we want out of the logging module to the actual infrastructure of the logging module. So, what we actually used for our logging messages, the log point debug, log point info, is a logger. You request a logger from the logging module. And then you have different functions that serve to um, indicate whether it's an um, interesting mes message, debug, or something that will bring all your system to its knees, critical. You can have different loggers at different places in your program, and you can request different ones. The um, loggers themselves have some configuration, so they know to which handler they'll talk, they know their debug level. We go into that later. And they send out their messages, log records, via a filter, the filter is optional, to a handler. Handler could be Steam handler, writing to a console, file handler, rotating file handler, sockets, queue for multiprocessing. I think there are 14 and counting in the module. It's quite likely that you find something that is useful to you. Maybe not perfect, but useful. Also, with a handler is a formatter. The formatter turns the log message think a dict um, into the actual text that you um, found out. 
So these are a couple of different objects. They are arranged in a tree, as we see later, but it's not very complicated to get them. And if you call base config, what um, happens, let's say, um, as a hood, is that it just set up a very basic logging infrastructure for you. So it gives you a logger, it gives you a stream handler, it gives you a standard formatter, and then it puts out this information that we saw previously. Now, the most interesting thing is usually what me log messages should we use. Debug, like the name suggests, is mostly for debugging. So if you need extra information because you're looking into some problem, it's not something you would have enabled as you run your program. Can end up in your log files. Usually space shouldn't be a problem, but it's maybe a little too chatty. Info is information like, I'm starting my program, I'm doing this, I'm not calling this function. Might be interesting. Let's you know where you are in your program, but again, not as important. Warning is just that, something that at one point in time you should probably look into. Then your error, something went wrong, and finally critical, your program is about to crash or needs to be terminated. So this also really helps you to just structure what you're writing, to think about what information do I want to communicate here. And as you put these out, you see that you um, get the logging level plus the information. And logging exception is just a special case of error where also the stack trace is added. And if you only keep, let's say, one thing out of this um, whole talk, it would most likely be this, because that helps you already to build your structured log, and you can build from there. So the most basic thing is just get the log messages into the program set up or um, fine tuning can happen afterwards. Now we go slightly more config, um, complex. This is basic config. Basic config is just the easy way to configure the logging module, mostly for scripts. So if you want to do just one call to get your logging, it's basic config. What I do there in addition to the slide before is that First of all, I add some um, format specification. There are two of those. One, the date format. It's basically, um, the standard format is also used for um, in the daytime module for parsing and printing to say what information you want to get out there. One thing to keep in mind is that milliseconds are not included. These, for some reason or other, run the format string. And the format string tells us on what information we want the logging module to include. The interesting thing is that the only part of this message that we supply is the last part message. Everything else is provided by the logger. So the logger will tell you what the time is, as specified by date format, plus a milliseconds, the name, um, the level of the log. It will give you the name of the logger message, and as you see later, you'll get much more information if you want it, including the um, line in your source code, including the thread or process ID. So you can log almost everything about your program in there, and in a way that you'll find the um, cause of the log entry later on. You will see that in addition to the log message, a pure text string, you add some, thanks, you add some information. The um, once we one pro three there, this uses the old style string formatting. I think from 3.2 onwards, you can also use um, the new style string formats. And that would be um, just a configuration option in the formatter. For this talk, I just use a simple word. So slightly more complex, basic config now is a format string with a date string and lock level debug. If you ever start logging with debug info and your messages don't show up, that's what you forgot. The default configuration um, has the default logger set to warning only, so debug and info messages get dropped. Now, I don't particularly like basic config, because at the end you'll have to learn two different modes of setup the logging. It has um, this 
interesting feature that it is only called once. So once it is called, it sets set up the logging system. And if you call it again, it will not necessarily change it, which can be confusing. So my suggestion would be to go to this directly. It's slightly longer, but at least in my view, it's easier to understand. So you request a logger. Then you set a level for this logger. Then you get your handler assign the logger to the handler together with the formatter, and you have your logging system set up. Essentially the same thing we did before. You can do this like I did it here. So just in your Python code, maybe just write a little module logging setup that you import. It will usually work. If you go for slightly more complex situations, you will do something different. But just going back what we did here, so we got logger, we assigned a stream handler to the logger, and we assigned a default formatter or formatter to the stream handler. And the logger always has this log level on which is enabled or not. In more detail, so the formatter has its two format strings, one for the time, one for the message. The um, log info message has the, let's say, textual part, whatever you want to say in prose, and some parameters that get in, um, added to the string. And following from this configuration, you get your actual log message. These are all the things that would be uh, um, available in the um, log record to add to your message. I've actually um, taken out some, because there are quite a lot of them. Some of them are quite surprising, like function name and the line number. By default, they are in there. You can disable them for performance reason if you want to. It doesn't make much of a difference. So just take away in your logging, you can really point to the Python code where the log message originated from, which may not be useful on the same day that you write it, but may be useful when you see a log message, say, two weeks, two months, two years after you wrote the code. This is the final way to set it up, dict config. There's also a configuration file config, but I um, like this more. Um, it is not actually easy to read, but it is quite powerful. So what you take up, should take away, the yellow parts are just the different objects that we have seen previously. So we have a logger down there, the handler, and a formatter all which of them reference each other. So the logger knows that it has one handler named console, and the handler knows that it is one formatter named long format, and all the other parameters are sent in there. Nice thing about this is that it's quite easy to add information, and if you have your logging configuration in a file outside your um, program code, it's quite easy to reload the whole system, so you can change your logging configuration from outside. You can add, and there's where things get slightly more interesting, different handlers to your loggers. So what I do here is just load the same config, then add a, base, uh, a second handler, and then lock one message again. And as you can see by this um, catch log file, now my message ends up in my console and also in my file handler. And if you want to, you can add many ha as many handlers as you want to. So this is our um, CV now. So we have different file handlers and a stream handler. The thing to keep in mind um, on the log level is that you can have different handlers with different levels. So if you say, I only want errors in my files, but everything in my console, you can do that. Like I said, so if we am um, just set the um, file handler to only print the warnings and ignore the debug and infos, it will not show up in your file. And this is, like we have, quite easy. So you load your basic config, modify it a little bit, and get more information. You can also, this is where things get interesting in terms of structure, add child loggers. So we just request other loggers, normally with, well, some name or name point dot, which maps quite good, well to the um, name of modules. And what you create is some logging tree. So you have a tree of logging objects, 
And you would normally configure this in a way that you um, attach the file handlers and everything else to the root logger, then add the child loggers below that, and then you have some switches to which to configure where log messages send up. So normally start the root logger, configure it, and then add one extra logger per module, and best practice is to add name for this. So I'm gonna go a little bit faster because there's one thing that I'd like to show you. You cannot filter. Filters, um, a little bit of dark magic. So it's just a function that you call with your log message, which then decides whether it gets passed on or not. You can also modify the log record. So if you want to add extra information, you can do that. And for that, I just refer you to the um, iPad notebook. The interesting thing and the most likely reason if things are failed is this workflow. So once you have your logging tree built, the let's say way that a logging message is passed up the tree is not really intuitive. So you have a logging call. If it is not enabled at the logger of origin, it gets rejected. If not, um, a record is created and the local filters are applied. Now, if there is um, a handler at the current level, this handler will be called. If not, it will go to the parent. At the parent, it will not work with the filters and it will not work with the level. So at this moment, the only way to get the message out is the handler, which is also quite nice because you know that the handlers are responsible for filtering methods. And then it gets emitted. Um, it's actually standard con the standard documentation from the module I just, well, made a little bit more colorful. But I think if you ever run into any problems with logging, this is the most likely cause because there are quite a lot of things that you can tweak or not tweak. Okay, so that's just some basic code for filtering. As you can see, from three point something, you can add callables. Before that, it was um, just an object that had a filter method. So for the 2.7 users, it's slightly inconvenient, but it's not much more complicated. And you can do a lot of extra things. So you can get the dictionary of the um, log record and add information, which is actually something that happens in the logging modules. It's not as ugly as it seems. And the log rec, so the log record that's created there looks about like this. So you can see that IPython um, string there. So it's created out um, from the IPython logging hierarchy. So tons of information that you might find useful or, well, not, depends, but just, yeah, behind the knee. So, if you do run into problems to do that, so see what my logging tree like, I want to recommend just one module. Logging tree, it's somewhere on GitHub, just group it, it's also on PEP. Um, it prints out the whole logging tree. This is about page one of, let's guess, five that gets created when you call the, um, or visualize the logging tree from an IPython notebook, because IPython itself has quite a lot of logging modules. As a little exercise for yourself, I just recommend um, open a Python console, import requests, and, and print the logging tree. So requests and all, all other modules will also add their own logs, which are by default not enabled, so they have a not set handler, a logging never not set but they're there and you can reconfigure them and use them if you want to. Okay. Uh, thank you, Stefan. We are unfortunately out of time for questions, but I'm sure you'll be answering them in the hallways sure. if people have questions from about locking. So thank you, thank you once more.